Welcome! In this session, I'm going to explain the basic functional differences between the two-stroke engine and the four-stroke engine. And they'll do so by showing each engine functioning side by side. So in essence, we'll see how similar some stages are and how different others are, which will give rise to the differences between the two engines overall. So just to begin with, let's just go over some key points on my diagrams. So my two-stroke engine is here, and this is my four-stroke engine. And I'm illustrating small petrol engines. So these are the flywheels and a coil pack. So we'll start with the four-stroke we've got the oil reservoir underneath here. The two-stroke actually has nothing down here. This is what we call an inlet port and this is an exhaust port. So rather than having an inlet and an exhaust port here on the four-stroke, instead we have an inlet and an exhaust valve. Let's take a look at these two engines in action side by side. And we've turned the key or pulled the pull cord and the engines are cranking. So both pistons start to lower and immediately there we can see on the four-stroke the piston has drawn in air and fuel above it. The opening of the inlet valve is timed perfectly with the induction of the air and fuel referred to as the induction stroke and the stroke meaning the downward stroke of the piston there's a lot less activity here in the two stroke there's no air and fuel coming in yet okay so the pistons have come right down now to the lowermost point and that's because the crankshaft see at the bottom have gone a full 180 degrees from top dead center the four stroke engine has continued to bring in that air and fuel on that induction stroke so we can't draw any more in but taking a look over here on the two stroke. All that's been achieved here so far is the opening of the exhaust port there on the left and the transfer port there on the right rotated 90 degrees further and this of course has allowed the pistons to travel halfway up their traveling distance within the cylinder. With the four stroke engine the inlet valve is now tightly closed and nothing can go back past it and it's the same with the exhaust valve so all of that air and fuel mixture above the piston is now being compressed because it can't go anywhere. But if we take a look over at the two stroke engine we've still got nothing here above the piston but what we can start to see here as the piston goes up it's creating a vacuum behind it and drawing in that air and fuel the four stroke all there is underneath the piston is the oil in the sump so we've got air and fuel at the top of the piston only with the four stroke and now both crankshafts have rotated another 90 degrees the piston on the four stroke here has just finished its compression stroke it's compressed that air and fuel combustion starts a little earlier than top dead center the two stroke the piston's in exactly the same position, but there's nothing up there above. We haven't compressed anything yet. But as the piston rose, it created more of a vacuum beneath it and drew in more of that air and fuel mixture. And so at this point, that air and fuel is all over the crankcase. So the crankcase is absolutely saturated. These magnets here are specifically placed on the flywheel so that when each piston is at or near top dead center, they actually pass this point. So each magnet travels past the coil packs at high speed. So just at that split second on that passing point electrical energy is generated and transferred from the magnet into the coil pack and then it goes further on into the HT lead in a split second that travels all the way up the HT leads to the spark plug where it activates the spark plug we've got a spark generated on both engines and even though there's no air and fuel mixture there to combust for the two stroke there's still a spark so to sum it up because of this there'll be a spark when the pistons in this position whether there's fuel up there to combust or not. But let's compare that now to our four stroke. We've got a large spark there generated because we've got that air and fuel in there. So that spark ignition's now spread and it's caused a mini controlled explosion inside the cylinder. And that explosion forces the piston back down. We call this the power stroke, where the four stroke engine is now generating power and forcing the piston down itself and creating its own movement. The two stroke hasn't yet created any combustion for its own movement. It's still moving from the operator's starting process. Process. And what's left behind here in the wake of combustion are the waste products here, the exhaust fumes. So when the piston's on its way back down, the exhaust valve opens just slightly to allow some air to come in from the exhaust side, because if there wasn't, the piston wouldn't be able to travel down properly because there would be a vacuum there. And at the same time, a nice flow of fresh air coming into those exhaust fumes help to dilute them so that when the piston rises again, all the exhaust gases can be flushed out that bit better. Now a two-stroke then. Of course, the pistons coming back down and that stopped the air and fuel from being drawn in from the inlet port it's actually starting to compress that air and fuel down there in the crankcase now both pistons are at their lowermost points because the crankshaft has turned a full 180 degrees from the pistons top dead centers so as the two-stroke piston lowered it created a pressure beneath it but the pressure couldn't go back through the inlet port here because the piston is blocking its route so the only way for that pressure to go now is this way through the the 
transfer port which is open now specifically and the pressure beneath it continues to push all of that air and fuel above the piston. In reality there would probably be quite a lot of air and fuel still hanging around in this area. But as that mix of air and fuel passed through it lubricated all the components, all the crankshaft, the bearings and the cylinder because the fuel has with it the two stroke mix oil. So wherever that fuel air mixture goes it's lubricating and it's doing the same up here so that when the piston rises there's going to be lubrication between itself and the cylinder walls. And that's quite different to the four stroke engine. The only means of lubrication in the four stroke is by use of this oil down here in the oil reservoir in the sump area because no lubricating oil whatsoever is coming in with the fuel on a four stroke engine. It's just the fuel itself. Now the crankshaft has turned another 90 degrees. Let's have a look at the two stroke. We've got the air and fuel now compressing because both the exhaust port and the transfer port are now blocked off by the piston itself. So this is the first time since we've been rotating the crankshaft that the two stroke is getting ready with its air and fuel to combust. But this is where the clever two stroke piston is working as a piston and a pump because as it's going up compressing that air and fuel it's creating that vacuum again behind it drawing in air from the inlet port there into the crankcase. So it's doing those two things at the same time. That's very very different to what's going on here in the four stroke. The rise of the piston is pushing out all of those exhaust fumes going out through the exhaust valve. The inlet valve is shut now so that there's no chance that any of these exhaust fumes can go back through the inlet and towards the carburetor. We call this the exhaust stroke. This piston is acting as a piston only rather than a piston and a pump and what's happening between the two pistons are very very different. The four stroke piston is forcing out the remaining exhaust fumes and the two stroke piston has compressed all that air and fuel together ready for the explosion of combustion and at the same time as it travelled up it drew in all of that air and fuel waiting for the next cycle. It still sparks because that magnet that passes the coil pack does so every 360 degrees so there's going to be a spark whether it's on an exhaust stroke or a power stroke and that neither provides a benefit or a detriment to the engine it just happens because of the timing of the electrical system. Some people believe that this extra spark helps to burn up any extra gases that haven't yet been burnt up and if it does that great but in either case the exhaust fumes have been pushed out of the exhaust manifold and the exhaust valve is now shut but over on the two stroke here we're on a power stroke so that spark is now igniting that air and fuel that ignition spreads rapidly into a mini controlled explosion and as we know this forces the piston downwards with great pressure and left in the wake there from the explosion is all those exhaust gases again the four stroke here is on inlet again so it's drawing in that air and fuel with a suction action the inlet valves open at the moment and so both pistons continue to travel down and if we have a look here on the two stroke the air and fuel underneath the piston itself is starting to compress the pistons again have come right down to the bottom the four stroke engine continued to draw in all that air and fuel and now it's filled the cylinder the two strokes also drawing in that air and fuel it flushes in and pushes out all of them exhaust fumes into the exhaust port so in comparison then with every downward motion of the piston fresh air and fuel is brought into the cylinder and exhaust gases are forced out the air and fuel is being drawn in on both engines quite differently both cylinders are charged and full of air and fuel both pistons are compressing that air and fuel so looking over here at the two stroke the piston has blocked off the exhaust port and the transfer port and the four stroke engines achieved its compression because the inlet valves closed there and so is the exhaust valve they're both on the compression stroke the pistons rise because the cranks now turned another 90 degrees and now are ready for a spark so it's producing the current and it's going up this of course happens more or less in an instant but there it is and the result is that explosion that again generates enough power to force those pistons back down and so again we've got two very different things happening in these cylinders and both pistons are coming up again now so as this piston rises it forces out all of them exhaust fumes and as this piston rises it's creating another compression stroke leading to a power stroke we know what's going on now on the two stroke we've got the full compression in the four stroke and it's pushed all of that exhaust gases out now through the manifold and we know that the spark here on the two stroke is going to result in combustion again and also we've got the spark here in the four stroke even though it doesn't need a spark as we've already been through so I hope that's explained some of the basic functionalities and it really is the basic functionalities but what I want to do is let the animation run now so that we can see things a little clearer
But now what I want to do is explain the differences between how these two engines lubricate themselves. The four stroke here has its own reservoir in the sump, which of course is filled to the appropriate level with the appropriate oil. The difference is we keep the oil separate from the fuel on the four stroke. And the weights distributed round the engine is via this pickup pipe. Before the oil's distributed round the engine, it goes through this little filter here, and that just filters out all the main impurities to make the oil a little safer to use. And so then it's distributed right up along this pipe, and as it does so, it's lubricating all those vital areas there. The oil pump creates all this flow. It's geared directly from itself to the crankshaft. So every time the crankshaft turns, it turns the gear of the pump, and that creates the turning motion inside the pump for all that movement. So the oil's now reached the extremities of the engine, if you like, and you can see now how much they differ in design when it comes to the lubricating system on these engines. The two-stroke is so much simpler in the way that it draws in the oil with the fuel and lubricates all those components as it passes. There does exist a simpler method of lubrication in four strokes and that is the inclusion of a protruded area made of metal on the bottom of the big end bearing and as the crankshaft turns that dips into the oil reservoir and flicks the oil up and splashes it. It's a splashing mechanism of lubrication and this type of lubricating tends to be on the smaller engines with the single cylinders. And I'd like to personally thank you for watching this whole video through to the end and if you do want to watch the full version of this video then the link should be just here at the side. Please also have a look down at the description the information I've got down there for you and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.